the show starts in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. In a world... where Carolina Panthers fans have an insatiable thirst for Panthers news and opinions. Panther fans unite! My name's Tony Dunn. Cody Lashney, how you doing? TK's in the house. How you doing, my friend? The stat daddy. But I think Derek Brown, hey man, he deserves that dab on him. Okay? Uh, dab on him, Phil Snow. Dab on him. All the same. Yeah, 100%. We can just Mine is going to go to the fullback. I'm going to dump on the Richie guy. Dab on him, Shaq. I'm going to put the towel on Matt Rule. Uh, you know, y'all took all the good ones. Only one post game roars ferociously. It's the C3 Panthers post game show. Back to life, back to reality, back to life, back to reality. Oh my goodness, the Carolina Panthers got blank today and what turns out to be a big old dose of reality. Oh my goodness, PJ witnessed the Walker blunder. Ugh, man, nothing. You know what is like, this is... This game was so bad that even um, a, I don't know, I don't even, I guess Baker Mayfield's the only thing that was all right in this game at any point. And even that sucks. Uh, my name's Tony Dunn. It's the C3 Panthers post game show. Welcome back, Cody Lashney, my wheel man. Uh, that was a tough watch right there. Dude, you know, uh, some people say that the opposite of love is hate, but that's not true. The opposite of love is apathy. And man, after the Panthers build you up and build you up and make you think that they have a chance to do anything, they just cut the knees right out from under you. And it makes you question, why do I even follow this fucking football team? Well, you know what? I feel like I might know y'all's answer. And it's because you get to get this therapy session, man. I couldn't tell you what else or what other reason it will possibly be for today. This therapy session is dedicated to the best Panther fans in all of YouTube. You know, him and love them. It's Alex Max pro Brandon R Dalton Fidel G baby. Oh, you know, G baby's got so much shit to talk, man. Jamie Revis, Joshua Hall, Michael Johnson, Mossy man, 789 news, Shane Reed, truck and mogul underground West. White Chocolate Espresso. Tony Dunn, ain't nothing to it but to do it, brother. Let's roll. Joe Mixon with five touchdowns today. Um, he was a wrecking machine. Joe Burrow, uh, in the face of any type of pressure, just throws dimes all the time. And the Carolina Panthers blundered, stumbled, and fumbled their way to a top draft pick good news ck the lions are winning nope right uh, they, they went down by three just with 16 minutes left to go so the bike or i'm sorry uh the the lions did beat the packers i'm yeah, sorry it is i'm talking 15. about the commanders uh the commanders uh were beating the vikings um and that would have been good for us but that didn't work out the jags um, won the jags won um i think really a lot of things in the scores have shaken out for the Panthers to get a top top draft pick. Now, this was not an entertaining watch, CK. No. It's this was a bad one. This it was, was bad. a bad one. I don't even know. I mean, was it the worst ever? Yes. I don't think. So. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you got to think one of, like like one of yeah. One, sure. They scored twenty eight points in the second quarter alone. We were mad about our defense giving up thirty points last week. They gave up 30 in the first half. 
Like that's that's how bad this was. If they didn't pull their starters and they didn't put uh their backup quarterback in there, um, this would have been a worse game than it was. Um, this was a horrendous out uh, outing uh, by this entire team. Not one person, not one uh, one player, not one uh, coach. It was the entire team did not show up to play today. Um, you can't even give Baker a pass in this situation. He almost threw an interception against backup players, right? Um, the dudes coming in, I mean, those are all people are going to look at. And, and Greg had talked about it in our little uh, chat we have uh, during the game that all, only people are going to look at and see 21 to 42 and think, oh, well, it could have been worse, right? It would have been worse. If 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 the Bengals wanted to continue to run this train, they could have just destroyed us. There was nothing we could do to stop them. Right. There wasn't a single good player on our squad. Greg, um, PJ Walker. Oh, buddy. Witness the Walker blunder. Oh, buddy. Three completions for, he was 30% on the day. 30% on the day, mm-hmm. a whopping nine yards passing. Mm-hmm. He almost mm-hmm. had more interceptions than yards. Zero. Oh, wait, yards. no, he actually, yeah. look at this. He almost had more interceptions, the same amount of interceptions as he did completions. Yeah. <laughs> he had three That's- completions, two interceptions. Uh, I don't even know if it was, look, he was bad, but. You know, people were dropping stuff too before then. You know, there, I mean, it, there's there's always excuses. And look, you know what? I just want to come out and say that, like, I went on a hill last week with PJ Walker, not saying that I didn't like him or that job. I thought he couldn't do it, but I went on a hill saying he's not the guy, and I'm not ready to sign him to be the franchise guy. Not saying he couldn't be, but right now I'm not ready to sign him. And I took so much shit for it. But you know what? I didn't die on the hill today, like the shepherd and blood and fire. I took that hill like he took all the hills in King's Landing, baby. I took that hill today because I was proven right that last <laughs> week was the one outlier in P.J. Walker's career of him having a good game, and that good game was backed up by 120 yards of rushing and a great defense. Okay, so, well, I don't say great defense. I gave up 34 points, but e- either way, what I'm saying is I was on this hill last week, so for the people who called in, I'm the guy with the beard in the bottom corner trashing P.J., I want to see y'all call in today and talk about this because I have stats to back me up and I will always go with the stats. There are always variables to the stats, of course. But I called it last week and said I was not ready for this guy. I wanted him to work out, but I was not ready to sign this guy to be the guy. And he showed this week that he's not the guy, period. I think I think the majority of Panther fans, and this is to the defense of anybody who was on this train, right? I think... Not a single one of us was ready to sign PJ Walker to a five year franchise <laughs> type of deal. My God, right? I wouldn't even sign him to a five year right? five game people, deal. No, not not a people, single man. not a single at least on this panel, right? G baby wants yeah, on to talk panel, about that. Cody we was panel. Cody's ready to start a no. quarterback oh, next up. year. Yeah, I never you're, said you're right. I'll say on this panel. Five five right. No, I said no. start him at quarterback next year. The argument was always, and, 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 at least from reasonable fans, was always. He deserves an opportunity. From what we saw, he deserves an opportunity to show what he can do. He got better uh, year week over week. His performance was getting was enough to get us excited about this team uh, again, and that was enough to make us want to at least give him an opportunity to be the guy. Not a single person. And G baby, you can go back, try to pull the receipts all you want, bud. You could sit there and say that we aren't listening, that we died on that PJ Hill. We did not. Cody and myself, we did not die on that hill. We said from the get-go, P.J. Walker has a lot of positive traits, and we think that he has he deserves an opportunity to prove he can be the guy. This week, yeah, he right. didn't do that. Yeah. I don't he even was, know how. Opportunity. Um, so it's like all he can blame is himself. I, I just want to say that going forward, there is no good option for the Panthers at quarterback. Agreed. Like you bet, you better absolutely hope <laughs> that C.J. Stroud or Bryce Young, or whoever the hell the Panthers are going to end up drafting with a top pick, you better hope that they're ready to come in day one. Because if not, then what else are you going to do? What, are we going to go and try and trade for Jimmy Garoppolo? I don't think the 49ers are even going to let him go now at this point. It's like, what are we actually going to do? The Panthers are, listen, I know my fandom dates back to 2011, and I remember the Panthers before, but it's it's more blurry to me than it is for some of y'all. But what I will say is this, 
it certainly in my time being a Carolina Panther fan, there has never been a more embarrassing consecutive or three years in a row that the yeah. Panthers have just made themselves the laughing stock of the NFL. It starts with David Tepper and his terrible hires. And listen, you know, me and Greg were kind of arguing today. Who is this loss on? Is it players or is it coaches? And I, I think at the end of the day, you have to say it's absolutely all of the above. Mm-hmm. Our coaches go, went back to that Ron Rivera, uh, you know, off man coverage, safe defense. Even when they knew that they were going to throw the football, they wouldn't load the box when they were going to run the football. This team looked like they were actively trying to tank for a top five pick in the draft, dude. You can't trust them. You yeah. cannot trust the Carolina Panthers. Back to yeah. life. Yeah. Back well, to reality. <laughs> I, I want to say that I want to get out in front of this, too, because while I will tout that I did, I was not that hill of P.J. Walker not being the guy, I also was championing for Steve Wilkes to be the guy, like I said he was. And I'll get out and say, I have mm. no problem admitting when I'm wrong. And I can say that maybe I was a little hasty with that decision. Maybe he's not the guy. I don't know. Because a lot of this problem, you're right, we had a big – you know, discussion about this in the in the in the man cave while we're watching the game. A, a lot of this was on coaching too. It wasn't just on PJ. It wasn't just on 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 players. It was on coaching too. So I want to get out in front of that and say I was wrong about that, and I'll admit that I'm wrong about that. The PJ Hill though, I'll take that one. I don't know. I don't even like. Uh, I don't know really what this tells us about our team. Is that it's I don't. Right. Yeah, it tells us who I we mean, thought they are, who we thought yeah. they were. Yeah. Right. Before this past two weeks, they are who we thought they were. Um, we let a few again. We we said it after the Tampa Bay game. Um, damn this team for getting our hopes up. Like we knew yeah. then that we weren't going to be like we got our optimism up, but we knew in our hearts that they were we were inevitably going to be let down. Um, it, it, even to the point to where God, I hate this team for making me feel hopeful again. Right? They did it again, and uh, and 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 we've learned our lesson time and time again, but. I tell you what, that tells me that I'm a true fan, that I continue to look at the positives and I continue to be hopeful about this team when there's really not a tremendous amount of evidence to do that. Um, that means that I want this team to win, that I want them to be successful. Um, and I know that the argument is wanting them to fail now is giving them long-term success. And that, that's just not the mentality that I've ever had being a fan. I want to watch good football. I want to be happy being a fan. And they unfortunately have not been able to do that. One of the arguments we got into last night on the Madden simulation is if we're drafted in the top 10, do we even take a quarterback if we find if there's a guy that's not uh, that we don't find that we're in love with? And the argument is you have Matt Corral. If there's a guy that you're not absolutely in love with, then you don't draft them in the top 10. And I said, if we don't draft a quarterback and we're picking in the top 10, we there will be riots. There is not a shot in hell that this team does not draft a quarterback if we're in the top 10. And it does not. It's not even a question mark at this point. No, I mean, it's like, uh, again, it would be malpractice to not, you know? Um, And I don't even, like, I don't even think, like, like, I guess Cody's right. is like, you better be ready for that rookie to come in and play because there's really not a lot of other options. uh, Let me ask you, are we? Are we ready for a rookie quarterback with the offensive line we have, the the offensive weapons? Are we No weapon. We got nothing to come in and play. Dude, this team got nothing. So if we picked so, up a wide receiver in free right. agency with Deontay Foreman, DJ Moore, and the offensive line we have, you don't think we're ready for an offense or a rookie? Well, yeah, but, a but, but, look, but look, how about this, though? Now we're hearing rumors that not only did the Rams give up, or were they willing to give up a 24 and 25 first round pick, they were going to give up a second round pick as well. This then, year. Right, right, yeah, and then right before the game starts, there was a rumor that the Packers – we're going to trade a first-round pick for DJ Moore. And that's where it's like the Carolina Panthers don't even know who they are as a football team. They literally took Derrick Brown out of the game due to I think illness. he was hurt. Okay. Yeah. They said it was illness on the game. Like, yeah, he was just sick of this bullshit team, and they pulled him. This seemed like a team that was looking to tank. And they, they didn't get all these draft picks that they could have had. It's like, what are we even doing, man? We look foolish from top to bottom. Absolutely foolish. Yeah, agreed. I don't know. Um, Is that... Am I missing Super Chats? We got one. We just got one that came in. 
Right. Kev, we only got one. Michael Johnson says we won't be good until the ping pong tables are gone. <laughs> Which I, I, I still believe him. I, yeah. I'm still on that. Um, so... I don't know. I think this is that. I mean, I, th- I think I keep him Burns. We're going to have to sign Burns now. If they don't sign Burns, then it will go down as like the biggest blunder. That was what Cody was saying earlier. He was like, it's a so Carolina Panthers if we didn't trade him and then we don't sign him. <laughs> like, it's such a Carolina Panthers thing to do. Cody's right about that. Mm. Yeah, 1000%. Like, imagine if we didn't trade him and then we just let him walk. And I mean, that's yeah. what we did to Curtis Samuel. Well, that was the whole point is, yeah, yeah. All right, um, let's just go ahead and get in the call.